Thank you all. Gosh, most people that know me don't think that I have fears around public speaking, but I totally do. So let's try to get through this <laughs> smoothly. <laughs> um, one thing that I have learned from my native, the native people in this community is the power of introducing yourself um, fully. So I'm gonna take some time today and uh, introduce myself. Um, Baboa, which means welcome in my native language. Um, my name is San Sandra Kaunesiak Bentor Oyemoye. I am a Liberian born American. Sandra was a name given to me, a European name, so that the world would be more accepting of me a black immigrant woman. Kaunesian are my tribal names from the Manon tribe of Liberia. Kau signifies that I am the firstborn as well as a daughter. Nesian, my proverb that a child slash essence cannot be borrowed. We often fail to recognize the transformative nature of one's own process to self-discovery. So I thought it would be helpful to introduce my full self. I came to Duluth in 2011 to UMD. From the moment I got here, I quickly got involved, first with the Multicultural Center, then in community through organizations like Youth for Duluth, Neighborhood Youth Services, Valley Youth Center, Mentor Duluth, the Community Schools Collaborative, the YWCA, Menace Peacemakers, Safe Haven Women's Shelter, Clayton Jackson McGee and the Duluth NAACP. I left this community in 2015 because I felt no sense of community. So to your, <laughs> to your um, statement about, you know, it being hard to sometimes make friends, I, I definitely feel that. My friend Daniel at the time had done that two years before me. Well, now we're married, as you all know, and we have an addition to our family, Jalil Oyenloye, who's back there asleep. We left, and that's because we, we left and we came back. And that's because when we came back, we chose to embed ourselves and build community in a way that could sustain our essence as black people and simply human. We worked with community to figure out ways to humanize our existence. We sought to find innovative ways to change our BIPOC outcomes and circumstances. First, by providing a platform to speak. We used art to bring people together, encourage conversations, and build collective community power. Through programs like Our Poetry, The Mixtape Project, A Goody Night Duluth. We did this because we discovered over the years that the Northland is a place that lacks BIPOC spaces and opportunities for growth. It is a space that allows just enough resources to keep those marginalized by economic disparities existing each day. The voices of those who fall within that category are often left unheard, muted. Therefore, most people, especially those from non-white backgrounds, often leave this region to find opportunity and a pathway to growth. Some of us stay as long as we can to connect and make transformational changes with the resources we can leverage. And we hope that the impact would remain even when we are long gone. Unfortunately, the Northland is not an isolated story. 
I, like the amazing people recognized today, those recognized before us, those that will be recognized after us, are committed to improving the lives of those around us. Therefore, with every open door, job, opportunity, and stage, I have asked myself, is there room for impact and change? In that same breath, I recognize my own need for accountability. I have made mistakes and decisions that didn't always reflect my entire light, but I have always been open to correction through the loving words of community and those that have continued to show me unconditional love. Leadership is just that. It is not without mistake. It is seeking opportunities to be better for yourself and those around you. It comes with mistakes and a consistent hope for triumphs. It is a journey emerging and growing. Processing one's own story is essential to the work of transformational community healing. That is my desire for every community I am a part of. Healing is releasing trauma, and trauma is generational with stakes that include economic disparities, religious, gender, educational violence, and more. Trauma can happen in just about every space, and so can healing. It's more than deep breaths. It's transforming the systems that continue to marginalize people like this black woman, me. It's my healing which exists in the collective. I hope that all of us, everyone here today, has an opportunity to heal. Thank you to all those who have given me the room to grow and heal into my leadership. Some of you are in this room today, Susanna Palaya Woodward, Mom Sharon Witherspoon, I think of Portia Johnson, I think of Ivy Vanyo, my sisters, Natasha Lancor, Shaquana McIntyre, and so many of you that just continue to inspire me. Thank you to those who nominated me for this moment. Thank you to all of the people who are alongside me today. Thank you all for your time and willingness to celebrate with us. Thank you.